Hello viewers, here we have a fried rich or free rick or however the heck you're supposed to pronounce it. Air conditioner. This is a 5000, or I imagine it's a 5000 BTU power miser model. Eric mentioned that he likes these units. This is one of the ones I got on that air conditioner debacle from a couple weeks back. I'm starting to kind of like this too. I believe it's a slide out which is interesting for something this small. It runs real quiet, nice slow low to it. And uh, I like the, the big branding on there is neat. Controls are simple, easy to use. Uh, let's take a look at the data sheet. I haven't taken this off yet because it didn't seem like it was coming off and then I realized that the it's got to be like it slides here. I, it's pretty brittle. There we go. So I don't want to force it. Uh, looks like it's in okay condition still. The filter is definitely. Uh, oh boy. Yep. Okay. <laughs> That's just. It's going. Um, there's the data sheet down at the bottom. It, it just broke apart as it fell on the floor. There's nothing left of the filter. Happily you store things in an attic. So this is from 1987. It's significantly older than I thought it was. The 5250 BTU window air conditioner type 1. 5.5 the amps. It's the model SP05G10C air conditioner. And it has R22. So you are listed. It's patented. I really don't have much of any experience with. Friedrich equipment. I see them around, usually in the older, more commercial areas, but I've just never personally had one. They seem to be more of a commercial series. I don't see them like in houses much. Um, but anyways, uh, I'll turn this air conditioner off, which needs a drain hole very badly. And I guess I'll leave this off for the video because it won't affect the way the air moves through the machine. Just make it easier to uh, see if the coil's getting cold. Uh, compressors on this side, there's not a lot of light to see in there. But uh, let's take a brief look at the back and the side. It is a rotary compression. Actually, it looks like the compressor is a ways into the machine. It's not even on the side. It's almost like in the center. That's kind of weird. It's a rotary. Um, as far as the rust goes, it actually doesn't look that bad. In fact, it looks very minimal. Come on, bro. You know that's not what I want to see. Yeah, the rust doesn't look bad at all. The coil's in good shape. I like the big branding on the back. That's pretty cool. Let's turn it all the way around and try to, try to get some pictures of the inside. Oh, this one faces down too. I'm not going to be able to see much. Nope, can't see much of anything. Well, we'll have to wait to take a look inside until I get it opened up. Or I suppose I could just slide it out, but I don't know. It's getting late. I'm not sure I want to open that can of worms right now. We'll just go ahead and turn it on and see if it runs. 
I checked it briefly and it seemed to operate. Everything operated, but that doesn't mean it was uh, like every like the compressor turned on and so forth, but I don't know if it's really operating correctly, you know, to put charge and everything. We are testing at 118.9 the volts. Go to the amps, and uh, we're in range, so we'll turn that down. Fan only. I believe that's going to be high fan. We got nice adjustments on the registers. You can go any which way you want, left and right, up and down. It's pretty good. One of the best registers adjustments I've ever seen. Air coming out everywhere. Nice. And that's the low fan. Nice, quiet, slow speed. Moving a decent amount of air still, but it's very quiet. That's the high cool, which really isn't all that loud either. Alright, here we go with the compressor. Oh, the fan power on low is 0.58 amps, 67 the watts, the power factor 0.98, so it's a PSC motor. And on high, it's 0.99, or no, 0.84, 88 watts, the power factor 0.88, so it's kind of a crummy uh, PSC motor. And it seems like he's drawing an awful lot of power for the amount of air it's moving. Okay, that's a good sign. We've got a charge in there. As you hear the hissing, and then it stopped. So that's what you want to hear as the evaporator clears out. The head pressure is building, so the compressor is working properly, and it definitely has a charge. We're up to 2.8 amps. And that condenser is definitely filling up. You can hear the, the head pressure change. Very chattery compressor. It's cooler than ambient, but it's definitely not cold yet. Coil well, doesn't feel that cold at all. We'll give it some time. Let's give it uh, a few minutes to do its thing and then we'll come back on a video. It's been a few minutes. We're up to 4.1 amps, so the head pressure is still building. It's going out kind of cold now, but I can only feel like the last, the bottom two rungs are really cold. So it's taking some time. Um, while this is building, I want to do a measurement. The window in the computer room is 43 inches wide, which I've been finding exceptionally difficult to make a unit fit in that window. So this is the length of the window. And the question becomes, do the side panels open wide enough to fill the window? Generally the answer is no. Because about this is how much you get. Like this one only opens to about 30 to 32. So this unit is pretty wide. The unit itself is 23 inches wide. And these side panels seem like they're really big. So let's see. We extend this all the way and it looks like they're in decent condition still. If they will be for long, well, that I don't know. But they extend 11 inches. So 23 plus 11 gives us 34. And uh, 34 plus another 11 gives us 45. So this will fit in the window in a computer room. So 
by default, this kind of ends up being the unit that's going to go in there, at least for now. Um, ultimately, eventually, cutting something in the wall there because once you put something in that window, you can't use a window fan because the other two windows, and you can open them up, but they're not like they're not you know casement windows. You, there's no way to put a fan in them really. So uh, actually, Russ found a unit recently from his supplier. Oh, Westinghouse machine, and that's what I really want to cut through the wall there. Uh, but that's a 220. I don't have a way to run that up there yet. I don't have any. Uh, I have to run any line. I don't have any things open on my my uh, breaker panel, which is a whole other separate project. Not for today, tomorrow, or next week. So if I can get this in the computer room, solves that problem until further notice. And 87. That's a good year. Definitely a uh, satisfactory machine to put in there long term. And it seems like it's working pretty good. It's getting cold. Up to 4.47 amps, so the head pressure's still building. The compressor is sounding a little more content. Certainly was not happy before, but it's likely it's the first time it's run in 15 plus years, and it's spent the last 15 years baking in an attic all summer, so. It's not had a ideal storage condition, to so say the least. Now, what's nice about this being a slide out is I can fit it in a window. Jeez. I can get it set up in the window, and uh, if I need to play with boards and stuff, I can. And then I just slide it in, which makes it super easy. Trying to fit a uh, non slide out unit in that window length is very difficult because if you got to play with boards on either side, it's almost impossible to manipulate them once the unit's in place. So I think this will work out good in there. Right, we're just about cold all the way through. We've got about two rungs left to go. I think we're going to be fine. Head pressure is now, or head pressure. Power draw is now 4.6 amps, so it's still building head pressure. So I think the charge is fine. Okay, it ran for another couple of minutes. We're up to 4.71 amps, and the coil is cold all the way through. So everything seems pretty copacetic. Might be a low hours unit because the Condenser still has really good airflow, which is surprising, considering how slow the fan appears to be running. It's got decent airflow all the way down, so that's pretty good. Coming out nice and warm. I don't know if you could tell in the video, but the compressor just got so much quieter. draw went down to 4.8 despite the additional almost amp or half an amp that the fan would be providing at full speed so these rotaries really don't like to run on uh, with the fan speed on low down to 4.7 which is what it was before with the fan on low. So the lower head pressure has compensated for uh, the power draw of the compressor going down. So when people say, oh, run it on low because it draws those power. Nope, it draws those power on high. Understand the equipment, learn how it works. Still blowing out pretty cold. Coil is still cold all the way through. I think we're good. It's full of moisture. It's super humid today. I think we're focused on it. So, looks like our next project is going to be clean this up and 
install into the computer room.